Ooh, think I put on a little bit of weight there, a little bit. Yeah, I've been uh, pretty sedentary for the past like one and a half, two weeks. So I had to let my body recover from the vaccines. For some reason, the immune system really got to me. And the only thing I can do is just recover. And I think I'm doing okay. I think today's a good day. And so I thought, why not do a YouTube video? I mean, I don't, I don't think I lost too much muscle. Maybe I did. It's all right. Put a little bit of weight, a little bit of fat, a little less muscle. Eh, I think I rock it, maybe. <laughs> anyway, but seriously, though, this video is about social anxiety um, and about how I've been dealing with it in my life. I've, you know, historically on this channel, I've usually given periodical updates and stuff like that. And I'm thinking, I haven't done an update in so long. Why not do one? For those that don't know me, I have social anxiety, okay? And I'm not going to, you can Google it up, what it all means and stuff like that, but I'm going to kind of give you my history with it real quickly. Um, and then I'll just sort of tell you how I'm dealing with it now and where I go from, where do I go from there? So as a kid, I've been very, very, very shy, sensitive kid growing up all the way from my young childhood to my teens. I never could click with people. I feel like as a result, I had another demon, uh, my orienta sexual orientation coupled with social anxiety created this ugh, pretty disastrous combination. I feel like they were intertwined with each other and it was really bad. And uh, my social anxiety got extremely bad late high school, really bad that, you know, a lot of people could sense that I was socially awkward. And I feel like they thought, or they told me, they'd call me names such as like, you're a retard and stuff like that. And and that continued on even through my young adulthood. I remember I was working in a gas station to where I'm trying to overcome and get more comfortable with people and confident myself and it didn't work. So I remember these, uh, good, you know, when, when, there, when I was put in a situation to where someone was very good looking and stuff like that, I got socially awkward, even worse. And then people mistaken that and got like, what's wrong with this guy? So, and then I remember one time I had had an encounter with a good looking guys, a group of guys, and they were all trying to, you know, trying to sweet talk me into getting free food or free stuff at the store. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't give away free product. And they're like, okay. And then they walk away, walk down back to their dorms down the road. And then I went out out of the gas station because I had to, to do, to change some trash, trash cans out there. I had to do work outside, but they turned around and come at me and started throwing rocks and stuff at me and call me retard. Yeah, I'm like, I'm done working in gas stations. So I moved into manufacturing to try to cope with it because it's, you know, you're dealing with less people, different people. You're only dealing with a, it's a stagnant environment. You're just dealing with the same kinds of people every day. Um, that was better for me, but a step backward. Um, it wasn't very socially stimulating for me at all. I didn't really make any friends there. There was just some really good acquaintances and stuff like that. But you know, I, I transferred to a different apartment there and it was much more socially better for me. So I clicked more with more um, diverse people. Let's just say that, you know, I worked with more women, worked with more just general people. And I tend to do better actually, surprisingly. It was my first time I actually made friends that were girls. So, and that was good. So maybe I need to go more in that direction thinking about it, but anyway, um, I give up manufacturing because I wanted more money. I wanted education. So I went back to college, took speech class, which I was so dreading. I did good on it. I did really great with it, but I felt like it didn't help my social anxiety. I just didn't. I still wasn't clicking with people and stuff like that. It just had all of these other, um, like insecurities about myself. I feel like that's where it was all stemming from was my confidence and stuff. So my senior year in college, I thought, well, why don't I try this? So this is where you guys come in. So I did a YouTube channel to talk about my social anxiety as well as my sexual orientation. And um, that was really good. That was probably a step in the right direction. I feel like that was a smart move. However, it wasn't addressing all my issues and, and, and it wasn't curing everything, but it certainly was a step in the, the, a better direction because A, I was connecting to you guys and other people that had the same issues. And, you know, from what you, information you were providing me was helping myself. Secondly, I was actually forced to look at myself on YouTube, on, you know, in, in post production and stuff like that. I could see the way I talked, my, the way I'd, I moved my hands and the way I looked, the way I, you know, and I hated myself so bad I wouldn't even look in a mirror. 
you know, before YouTube, I was trying to validate myself through other platforms by posting shirtless pictures and things like that just to seek validation, but it still wasn't doing the whole picture. You guys weren't seeing me on video. So yeah, so I feel like this was a step in the better direction. So I, a win-win there. So I was a smart move. However, there's limitations um, to that because I'm not actually doing face-to-face -face interaction with people. So after college, I um, was in the, in, the, in the office environment, which is heavily communications. You're always talking to people on phones and stuff like that. That made myself better to a degree. I built working relationships, but not really friends, you know, and work is not really the best place to make friends for me, historically, it's starting to look that way. But it would be nice to have someone to just talk to and, and stuff like that, you know, and I don't really get that, you know, and I don't click with people. It's just we're so different and I don't have like nothing in common with a lot of people. And I feel like that's kind of the issue I have is lack of commonalities. It's just nothing to talk about. I mean, I could chit chat about the weather all day. Not really. <laughs> I can't do that. It's so boring. I about want to fall asleep and get away. Um, but when I talk about things that I have in common with, which is rare, holy crap, I love talking, but they may not be in the mood to always talk on top of it. But anyway, so I, I feel like I, I feel like I've, I've come leap years, but it's just the fact is I'm lack of interest, lack of motivations. Um, I'm, I'm having focusing problems. I'm having all these other problems. And I feel like they still are stemming back from social anxiety. At least I think they are. And I don't know. Um, a lot of stuff from the past has been resurfacing, which probably in fuel, was fueled my social anxiety besides my sexual orientation. And that was neglect. I grew up in a heavily neglectful household. You know, I just, my parents didn't know what grade I was. They didn't know what age I was half the time. They always had to ask me. And and I felt like I was sort of the forgotten child, you know, and, and I did, you know, my dad was drunk one night and I think he was telling my brother, my twin brother, who actually is in the same boat as me, where we felt neglected. But he, my, my dad was telling him that he was felt bad for how much he neglected us. He's even aware of it. And uh, that's a great step, but I, that's just the way things are going to be. And I can't be dwelling on the past. I've got to let go of the past. I'm aware of it. But still, it has a huge echo through your life. Or it has an echo through my life. Sorry, I shouldn't say you. It has an echo through my own life. And it's really difficult. It is truly difficult to deal with every day. And I struggle with it. And I'm struggling with a lot of anxiety for some reason that has surged in the past. This whole year, it, I've had such high, had a high depression from January into February. It was the longest range depression I've ever had. It was every day was depression. I just was laying in bed and stuff like that. And I was trying to get out and meet people and stuff, but I still depressed. It wasn't fixing anything. And I'm, I'm thinking, I think the problem for me is I'm not an expert on this. This is where I'm going to, I'm going to get to that later on that. But, um, I think the problem is I don't like who I am. I don't know who I am. I don't know if I built this all this, you know, when I was younger, I built this artificial person. And I thought maybe I, I'm becoming myself, you know, but I, I wonder if I still am that artificial person I created and I'm just a, a, a mutation of it. And I'm like, well, what is Matt like? Um, I, I, um, Matt likes this and this, Matt or somebody else. But I just want to be me, myself. I, I just want to express myself, you know, that I have been. I feel like I'm just trying to please everybody and try to look like, and this is stuff I should have been battling when I was like 19 and I'm not. It's me being a coward, but now I'm confronting it and I wanna look and do things that I want to be me. I want to dress the way I wanna dress. I don't care what people think. And and I feel like that's part wrapped all, all up in the social anxiety and that's where I'm currently standing. So um, with that in mind, where do I go from here? I need to work on building up more confidence. I'm happy with the way I look in the YouTube video, but is that the way I want to look? So what I'm saying is, am I happy with myself? That's basically essentially what I'm saying. And I'm going to reach out to a therapist because I reached the end of my road. There's this bridge I got to cross and I need these tools to get across the bridge. I know I need to do it myself, but I need to accept myself. So yeah, um, I had to stop the video there. It went off, but um, so yeah, I, I need the tools to get across the bridge from the therapist, um, from a therapist or whoever. It, I mean, I don't want medicines and I'm not saying medicines. 
I don't need to go see a psychiatrist to get medicine. That's only, those are the last resort is medicines, but I really need to focus on my problems and focus on how to change my mentality. And I've been trying, what I've been trying to do is been banging my head on the back of this chair and saying positive things. That does help, but it doesn't help on everything. So I got to change my, my way of thinking. I'm, I'm very self-aware of what I need to do. I just need additional tools. I need a push. Um, and I think it's self-accept. Okay. I think the problem is I'm not still self-accepting of myself deep down inside. I keep saying I am, and I've told you guys that, but I really don't think I am self-accepting of who I am as a person. And that's, it's not just my orientation. It's just who I am in general. I don't accept myself. Like, and I don't know. I think that has to do with my relation with my father growing up. And some people call it, what is it? Toxicity masculine toxicity, whatever. I don't know if it's necessarily that, but it was, my dad was always telling me there's a certain way you gotta act, there's a certain way you gotta be. And you know, it, it was weak if you cried, it was, that's stupid. If I were to have a son, he can cry, and he can, being emotional is part of being a human being. But anyway, I don't wanna get into that. It's another discussion, I'm getting off topic. But anyway, I just wanna let you know where I stand with my social anxiety and where I go. Still an icky mess, but overall, I will say I didn't mention the positives on it, but I have improved on a lot of stuff. I'm a lot better, but well, I, I think I'm a lot better. I just feel like I got a, a lot of work to go. And I'm, as I'm getting older in my life, I need to, to start setting actions a lot better than I have been. And my, I have been taking action, but not good enough. I would give myself an F. I've been making effort, but not enough effort to get that passing grade. So wish me luck. I got work ahead. But anyway, I will be doing periodic social anxiety updates and things like that. I'll keep you posted. Um, always feel free to comment below and, and, and discuss like anything that are you insecure about yourself, things like that. And this is a community. We got to help each other. We got to look each other's wounds, you know, the wounds. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting awkward now, but uh, I think I'll, uh, I'll get off and I will talk to you guys later and I will. Okay. All right. Bye. <laughs>